Hi, I'm Jenny. And I'm Dave. And this is Elementera. Hi, welcome to the Culinary Alphabet. The letter today is W, and the word we've chosen is water bath. And another word for water bath is bain marie. And this is when you take a pan or a bowl and you put it into a larger pan filled with warm water. And it um, aids in the cooking of custards, sauces, and then savory mousses. And it helps them, it prevents them from uh, curdling or breaking when you cook them. Uh, another use for a bain-marie is you've probably seen them on buffet steam tables. They're used to keep food warm. So a water bath or a bain-marie is when you have warm water and you use it to gently cook another food or to keep food warm. And that's, uh, that's our word for today. Welcome to the savory and spicy translation part of our program. I'm going to be talking to you about capers. People say, what are capers? Is it a vegetable? Is it a spice? So I want to clear this up for once and for all. Capers come from an unripened flower bud. Um, they are dried in the sun after they've been harvested and then they're pickled. And the reason they're pickled is because they need to have their lemony taste brought out which would be similar to a green olive. And you can use capers to season sauces or in meat dishes. Hi, welcome to Elementaire, where we show you how to cook simple, fresh, seasonal food at home. On today's show, Dave's going to show you how to make a fabulous spring chicken roulade, and he stuffed it with prosciutto, mushrooms, and leeks. And I'm going to show you how to do a great chilled asparagus that's been marinated in a lemony herb dressing. See you in the kitchen. So today we're doing a chicken roulade with a simple sherry sauce. And um, this is a great dish to make. It's simple, but it presents so well. Um, not only does it taste great, but when you cut into it, you get a beautiful, colorful spiral. And it's, it looks really nice and elegant for fancy dinners if you want to impress your friends, or just make a nice, tasty dinner for midweek even too. Um, we're gonna do it today with leeks, a little bit of prosciutto, some provolone, and some herbs and mushrooms, but you can certainly make this a lot of different ways. We've done it with spinach, you can do a bunch of different types of cheeses, stuff it with meats of your choice, so let your imagination go and come up with flavors that you like, but I'll show you how I like to do it. Um, so first off, we're gonna start with a chicken breast, and we want a chicken breast, not those huge ones, that are chemically altered. Um, try to get a chicken breast that looks like about the size chicken breast used to be. So roughly three and a half, four ounces, um, about that size. Because if not, when you flatten it out, it gets just way too big. So, and uh, one of the ways I flatten it, I have it on a sheet of uh, cellophane or uh, saran wrap paper. And then we put one over the top, take a hammer, and we're just gonna flatten it until it's about three eighths of an inch and even all the way across. And what you're trying to do with this is, you want to have it thin and big enough so that you can roll it, but also even, um, so it cooks even all the way through. So what I do is I kind of work from the center, pushing the meat out as I work it with the hammer. It doesn't take much, especially if your chicken is at room temperature. So there, we've got nice and even and a lot thinner to a point where we can roll it now. And in a second, I'm gonna show you how to put the stuff in and roll it up. All right, so we just finished pounding our chicken and now I'm gonna show you how to, how to layer it and uh, to put it into a roll. So what I like to do first is I like to add the uh, aromatics. And this is going to remind you a lot of the persilada we talked about in one of our previous shows. But we have lemon zest, a little bit of fresh rosemary, and then some uh, parsley. And so what I like to do is put that on first so it comes in contact with the meat. And if you have all this stuff done ahead of time and you're making them for friends and family, it goes actually really pretty quick. So 
try to have all your mise en place done ahead of time. And so, okay, I put a little bit of a rosemary, the parsley, the lemon zest. Now I'm gonna add the leeks. And I have the chicken breast long ways, as you can see. You wanna lay the leeks long ways as well. And these leeks are mostly the white part with just a little bit of the green, and they've been blanched in water just briefly, just so that you can make them nice and flexible. So about a minute is what we did it. And so you lay your leeks on there like that. Then uh, I put a piece of the provolone. Get some nice, good prosciutto. Splurge on that if you can. It makes a big difference in the final taste. About a, have it sliced thin. Use about a, a slice and a half. And then I put the mushrooms right in the middle. Now these mushrooms are just simple button mushrooms, little brown mushrooms, and I've sauteed them in butter just briefly until they're soft and cooked through. If you are doing a different flavor chickens, you can certainly add wild mushrooms, shiitake mushrooms, all different types, but these are nice and neutral for this. So you start at the, this end, and you're gonna roll it. And as you roll it, you're gonna tuck it under and keep everything in to the best of your ability. Just like that. So you have a nice little roll here when you're done. If you want to tie it, you can go ahead and tie it at this point. Some people um, truss it or put it with toothpicks. Um, I don't think it needs to do that, but you can if you want to, or if you're having trouble holding it together, you can certainly tie it. Um, just a few wrappings of kitchen, uh, kitchen string. I have a couple already made here. Put it into your casserole dish, seam side down. That way it'll keep it together and sealed when you cook it. So you don't want a really big casserole dish because you're gonna be making the pan sauce from that dish. So you just you want it pretty snug in there. And you dot the top with some uh, fresh butter. That'll help enrich the sauce as well. I'm gonna put a little salt and pepper over the top so you season it. Then you're gonna use a little bit of dry sherry or cream sherry, depending on the taste you like. And you'll use about a cup per six breasts. So I'm gonna use a little bit less than that since I've come over to four breasts. And that's basically it. You're set for the oven now, and you're gonna put this into a 350 degree oven for about 20 to 30 minutes. And uh, we'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. Since it's asparagus season, I've chosen asparagus to be the um, vegetable that's going to accompany Dave's chicken tonight. Simply steamed and then chilled. Now, I'm going to make a marinade you can use on almost any vegetable you like, but it really is succulent on our asparagus. So what we're going to do is we're going to zest in some lemon. If I can get the right side of the zester, we're going to zest in some lemon. I like to use all the way around. I always wash my lemons first and then dry them um, because if I'm going to be using the peel, I want to make sure that it's clean. And then I cut off both ends because it makes it simpler to use into the juicer. Then I have a few little green onions, the white part only, I'm going to add to that. And then I'm going to cut this in half and we're going to just juice it right into the container. You can use a jar at the end if you want to shake it. You can use a measuring cup, you know, whatever you want to use is fine. You don't need to make a lot of this because you don't want your vegetable to swim. You just basically want it to flavor it a little bit. And then capers. I talked about these vegetables, or pardon me, this uh, type of food a little earlier in the show. If you get a little juice in, it's okay too. Sometimes I like to just add a little extra juice because it has that nice pickle flavor. 
And then we're going to add some cracked pepper and a dab of garlic and some salt and a little bit of olive oil. Remember when you're doing any type of a dressing you want to do one acid to two oil, whether it be vinegar, lemon juice, or whatever. And then you're just basically going to stir this around. I love to use a good, rich, extra virgin olive oil. Mm. And then we're just going to spoon this over the asparagus. See how simple and easy this was? Makes such a pretty presentation too. I'm finding that the more intricate your serving vessel is, the prettier it makes the food look. And then what's left, just do a little drizzle. And then I like to use a lot of fresh herbs. So I have some parsley here and some dill. So I'm going to cut off a little bit of parsley. And we're just going to mince a little over it. Don't get the stem, although I will tell you parsley is one of the only herbs that you can use. And if you use the stem, there's still a lot of the parsley flavor in the stem. And it's not real tough, like say a basil leaf or a thyme leaf or something like that. And then I'm going to add a little bit of dill. Oh, let me grab this piece here. Not a lot because you don't want anything that has a particular strong taste to overpower. And sometimes as delicate as dill is, it can be overpowering. And that's it. And there's a very pretty little evening vegetable. And we're going to get Dave back next to me and we're going to have our presentation. I'm really sorry you can't be joining us for dinner tonight. Look at this feast. Beautiful, healthy. Spring-like. Fresh. Perfect May dinner. The presentation is absolutely spectacular, Dave. You can see every ingredient that you stuffed into that chicken breast. It's absolutely beautiful. Thanks. I commend my colleague over here. Thank you. Uh, yours is equally stunning. Thank you so and much. It smells. It, if you guys can only smell this, yeah. the, the dill and mm. the lemon and the olive oil, it's just can't wait to eat it. So anyway, we hope you, can I. hope you enjoyed our show tonight. Thanks again. We'll see you next week on Elementary. Bye.